Hi, Chris with Kindly Ops here. And so this video is going to primarily show you how to deploy an EC2 instance, uh, perhaps inside of a private subnet, and log into it without using SSH. Um, now this example scenario is going to be deploying Kali Linux into an AWS account in um, the same way that you might deploy something for an internal penetration test. So that being said, this whole idea of using SSH keys is really kind of a big pain point for a lot of teams. But if you are using it, please ask yourself the question, do you really need SSH? Is that really necessary? Hopefully this will give you some ideas about the use of SSM instead of SSH uh, for you and your teams. Um, but if you're watching this video, you probably already know that what the problems are for SSH, right? Um, especially when using it in AWS, you have to think about your security groups, you need an SSH port open. And of course you can uh, scope that down to perhaps just your organization. But now that everybody's working remotely, uh, developers are spread out across the globe, is that scalable? Now you have to keep track of developers' IPs or people IPs on the, people on your team. We don't want to, of course, uh, open up SSH to the world. That's something that you generally don't ever want to do because SSH itself is a big target. What if your instance is in the private subnet? Well, now you're going to need a bastion or a jump box in order to get into that box. So now you have this other piece of infrastructure that you need to maintain just to SSH. And this is a big headache. If you're a consultant just trying to do an internal pen test, now you have to ask your client if they can bring up a bastion so you can jump into this in private subnet. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and there's a better way to do it. And that's where SSM comes in. So let's take a look at a working cloud formation example and I'll post a link in the description um, and you can take this and modify it however you, you or your organization uh, might need it. But essentially, this is going to allow us to bring up a Kali Linux AMI based uh, instance in, in, in a uh, AWS account, perhaps even in a private subnet. Now, this is going to assume that you're running in US uh, West 2. And this is the AMI ID for that. So if you're going to be using a different region, you're going to have to open up the uh, the marketplace and grab the AMI for that region. Um, so just for the example here, we're just going to use uh, US West 2. And a note on that, if you haven't used the Kali Linux AMI from the marketplace, you will need to um, uh, allow that in the web console. You'll have to subscribe to it. Um, so you'll also need a subnet ID to provide this CloudFormation stack and also uh, an IAM group name. And perhaps you're using um, something else for IAM. Maybe you just want to do a direct to the user. So you'll have to refactor that if you uh, if you so desire. But there's also a password entry. And this is going to be for uh, the VNC password. Um, and this is an internal pen test example. So we're going to be logging in. And what this CloudFormation template is going to do is create uh, just a few resources, one of them being an IAM role that's going to allow this instance to access SSM and all, its, all of its core functionality so that the SSM agent can speak to uh, your AWS account. And that's all that the instance gets. It has no other uh, uh, privileges besides that. And so we also create an instance profile that we attach the role to. And we bring up the instance here and also just a modest size volume for, for Kali Linux to use for various purposes. And we also bring up just a T2X large and you can modify this however you want. Um, and we name it. And then we provide user data. And this is where all the fun stuff for Kali Linux happens. Now here is where we um, provide access to the IAM group that we um, entered in the parameters. And basically what this is going to do is only allow um, the individuals in that group to start a session on this specific Kali Linux instance that's created in the same CloudFormation template. It also allows them to start a port forwarding session. And it will only allow them to terminate sessions that they themselves started. 
So it's a pretty basic CloudFormation template actually, and it outputs the instance ID. So let's let's see. Uh, I already fired up this this template using this command inside the uh, inside the CloudFormation template itself there there in the comment. So let's go ahead and grab the uh, the instance ID. So there we go. Now we have the instance ID there. See if we can just log in and start this session. Just a normal SSH like session. And there we go. We're in. Fantastic. So that's great. I provided a helper script called port forward. And essentially it's going to start the session, but it's also going to throw up this document name, right? AWS start port forwarding session. And then you provide it some parameters. And in this case, we want to pass in the VNC port and then attach some local port. And I just threw in the local port 3001. And um, let's see if we can start this. Oops. Gonna have to get in the right folder. And there you go. So now it says port 3001 is opened for this session. So let's see if we can VNC into it just using localhost 3001. I'll provide the password that I entered in the CloudFormation template and there you go. Now we are in the Kali, in Kali Linux instance in a private subnet in AWS without SSH needing to be open. Yeah, so that's a, an example of how you can do that. Hopefully this provide you with a few ideas of how you can use SSM, whether it's using it for an in internal penetration test like uh, this example, or whether you can use it to um, uh, manage access uh, for, for individuals that need to log into instances out there in AWS. I hope this helps.